The tipping point is when we're all focused, all of our energies, all our emotions in a particular way, and then life changes thereafter based on the outcome of that particular event. So the last tipping point we were able to identify was the very first one we did on a social consciousness level, which was the 9-11 tipping point, because life was changed for the whole planet thereafter, pretty much. I mean, I'm sure there were people in the Amazon that became aware of the event six or eight months later, Mm -hmm. but for the vast Mm -hmm. majority of us, it was almost an instantaneous that day kind of an event. Right. This one coming up in November, we know the particulars around it, how it will affect the humans. We just don't know what the causal agents are. And having gotten the Israeli mistake oil volcano one connected but wrong in terms of what caused what, I'm becoming very hesitant to be monkey mind out there saying, oh, this is going to cause something. But we do know that there's four days of uh, everybody holding their breath from November 8th through the 11th and then huh. two months of release language. So now, now would, would, I, the, the important thing about what, what, what you just said, what Cliff just said, is release language. That doesn't mean the problem is over. No, it just it, means it, that it, you it can't has, hold your breath anymore. Just the anxiety right. is in you. You've just got to, you know, let it go. You've got to breathe. Right. That's right. And then deal with it. And it could be right. really unpleasant. Uh, or it could so be you, a giant party. I mean, if something to, occurred and we and we had, you know, I mean, we can always have it be the other way. Usually, our our reports don't work out that way, but I keep hoping. A, a party for two months? Well, look, this, what would planet? happen? If, what would happen if, um, <laughs> you know, hypothetically, the uh, shadow government came out from behind the shadows and said, "Guys, we're going to try and seal off the oil volcano on November eighth with a." Uh, a harp-like uh, uh, energy weapon thing that'll cause an earthquake. We think it'll probably cause New Madrid to go, and there'll be a whole lot of shaking, but if it works, it'll be done, and we won't have to worry about this. And then yeah. that actually occurs. It takes four days. We get the New Madrid going off. Everybody's holding their breath to see if it works. And then it did work, and hooray, for two months we all party. That would work. Um. Okay. Because, you know, the release language would be the same. There'd be a lot of recriminations and so mm-hmm. on, but we'd still be uh, thrilled. Everybody would be, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. back oh, on yeah. the new path. I'd like to see the, uh, the, <laughs> the powers that be admit to such technology. They won't. They, that's they, the but problem that's my is, point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It ain't going to happen. No, and we also have to face the fact that they're, they're really kind of screwed because we have to look at it this way. They, even if there is going to be an evacuation, they won't tell people. They'll just let it occur. They can't afford to tell people in advance because the minute that anybody in an official capacity comes out and says, guys, we're going to evacuate even 5 million people, the entire global derivative markets crash of that millisecond because of all the property that used to be backing whatever amount <laughs> of those derivatives. CDS, rest in peace. Yeah. Rest in hell where you belong. And, uh, and it'll occur either way. The minute the evacuations occur, then we yeah. realize we can't live down there because of floating gas clouds that are, you know, causing birds to drop dead out of the sky. And well, they're there right cars. now. That's right. Right. The, the, the lands will still go. The derivatives will still be shot. But at least there won't be anybody in officialdom that will have to stand up and exhibit an act of courage. I still am amazed that when you think about it, how few exits there are from massive population centers. Think about it. How many exits are there from your urban population center? Two or, two or three? You don't want to be talking to me about that. No, I'm speaking <laughs> because rhetorically Because I'm building here. a boat. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm t- well, you better hurry. I'm uh, talking to the audience out there. You think about yeah. it. You've got two or three major freeways, and, and that's it. you got yeah. a couple of big uh, tractor-trailer rigs sideways. you got no exit or, rights. Or even things you can't see, like gas clouds. What if you that's drive right. into one of these events? Yeah. And you die in the car while you're driving. Yeah. Or you're, you're, you're overwhelmed and you lose conduit. It doesn't matter. The, absolutely. Uh, remember, methane, no odor. And colorless, yeah. Okay. And it's a and mil- heavier than air. A million yeah, times. Under appropriate conditions. Uh, stays know, right down near, near the ground usually. A yeah. million times more concentrated and available in the ocean than it should be. The professor said he was he was absolutely overwhelmed, stunned, beyond stunned. Well, Back, there's an issue there. Mm, yeah. The, the hold hold on, please. We've got to do this. Come right. Hold your thought, yeah. please. We'll be right back.
Okay, and we're back with Cliff High, whose famous words, Profane times demand profane words. Be warned. I'm warned, I'm warned. <laughs> well, you know, you get that way. It's a, it's a disgusting time. Then to think that um, BP did this deliberately, or at least the powers that be directed their minions to cause this to occur. There's all that kind of evidence in terms of everyone selling their BP shares before it occurs. They well, knew they were having you know, trouble last when you were gathering data for the March 12th report, though, or for this report. Uh, for the March 12th report was February 2. They were having pressure trouble with this way early on, and they just right. stood to hell with it, and they kept right on drilling. So, right. yeah, they knew this thing potentially was going to do exactly something uh, similar uh, to what it's doing. I don't know... These people are like parasites, though. Uh, they'll take advantage of anything. An automobile wreck, it doesn't matter. They'll take advantage of it. So uh, I know. It's uh, disturbing. Yeah. Because right. so many of us would not. You were uh, starting to say something at the break. Do you remember where we were? Oh, just about the uh, methane uh, and how it can get into the... You were talking about the fellow that found um, the million times higher. Yeah. The, the issue for me is not merely that. Because the ice methane, of course, as if it's broken loose through the jostling of everything going on down there, floats up, it dissolves and produces dissolved methane along the way. But the other issue, of course, is the unseen once it's out as a, as a gas. We also have to acknowledge that the oil itself evaporates as a, uh, at a tremendous rate, actually. Uh, uh, volumetrically, it can lose a huge amount of mass in the right conditions, which they have in the Gulf. So once again, I'm I'm very concerned about the ill winds component of this, and the issue of the diaspora, which is the scattering of the peoples. In the case of previous uh, examples, uh, historically, we've only had things like climate change and and patterns of movement to right. go by. But we're going to probably live through something that would be a permanent or unknown in duration. We just would not be able to guess how long it would be if if they end up starting to evacuate. Let's leave aside the potential for things like the uh, methane uh, explosion causing a tsunami, which is very real if there's any kind of subsidence or uh, rupture down there. But uh, leaving all of that aside and just dealing with uh, any kind of an evacuation, not only do we have the instant, at that point, collapse of the economic system that in any way touches derivatives, mm -hmm. and that pretty much is probably everything these days, but at that point, we also have to start dealing with the chaos that would be involved just because the social mass won't move the way we have seen in the past. So our models are not particularly effective in saying, oh, you know, we saw 5 million people or 20 million people in movement with the uh, climate change that we, um, uh, where there was run by Tumajin, the guy we call uh, Genghis Khan. Mm -hmm. And they did thus and so, and there's, this is how they moved relative to that climate change. Well, they weren't in a situation where they they were dependent on automobiles and the fuel for them, and right. they moved in a in a asymmetric tribal fashion. So it was more or less um, disorganized chaos that had certain boundaries. Whereas ours will not. We'll have freeways clogged, as you point out, and then we'll have all of the issues of Katrina, especially those with the healthcare system, compounded by the sheer mass of people involved. Right. And then there's the issue of where, where they would put them. So it, yeah. it becomes uh, logistics uh, at a huge level, even beyond the ability of any they to direct. I don't so think I, they can direct it. I don't think they're going yeah. to try to organize uh, an evacuation in any kind of, of logical sense. I think, I think that what they're going to do is take the, the CS, the chicken manure way out, and just let it happen. They and then happen, try and yeah. try and direct it after the fact. I, I honestly don't. I don't see an organized evacuation of 20 million people. I, I just don't. Well, we couldn't do it even if we tried. And that's I what think I'm that's saying. Dawned it's, on them. Yeah. No, they can't. And so they're going to. They're just not going to say anything. It's like right. if if they knew the world was going to end, or an enormous asteroid was going to hit us, Would they, they wouldn't tell anything? us. No. 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 So it's in our own interest to start thinking about ourselves in a different way now. And this is part of that paradigm shift that's occurring. And, in fact, you see it even on the news, and your previous guest had alluded to it with the various rants at the various governors. Now she stood up for 
the new guy down there in Louisiana because at least he's out there. And it's, you know, that's, even if he is corrupt, actually, especially if he's corrupt, he's probably a very good local governor because he's dependent upon the corruption and realizes this, <laughs> wants to keep things going. So he's going to fight mm-hmm. for it. Mm-hmm. But, but, you know, regardless of his motivation, we're now seeing the paradigm shift where everybody's acknowledging that the empire is defunct in its ability yeah. to get anything done. It's overstressed. Yeah. Yeah. The, even the National Guard can't really commit because it has no resources other than nominal manpower. And at this stage, we're starting to see that shift, and I bet you we'll see the breakdown all in the process of it ultimately becoming an evacuation, all the way down to, to where you're more or less dealing with um, probably friends and family building up into some level of a tribal collective. Uh, it, 